happy 4th of July, everybody. It's a lovely day to celebrate. Get a little day drunk, get some barbecue going. If you're not American, enjoy the day anyway. And have a good time out there. Right now, this video, I'm gonna go through my commercial beer collection. I do have a stash, mostly sours, some barrel aged stuff. Because I have a lot, I'm gonna actually gonna make this a two part series and I'm gonna taste one of them either this video or the next video, I haven't decided. Let's get right to it. The very first beer I wanna to get to is called Wild Lady. It's by the Good Beer Company, they're in Santa Ana, California. You know, the bottle just says here, Blonde Farmhouse Ale Bottled with Wild Yeast. So I figured it was a good one to get, age for a while. Got this a while ago. Uh, this does not have any year of when this was bottled, but the notes do say this. I got some notes on my computer. We present to you the second batch of Wild Lady, a beer that is supremely dry. This beer starts off as Painted Lady, our dry, our dry Belgian style blonde ale. After months in bottles with wild yeast develops a subtle uh, vinous quality that's perfect for warm Southern California afternoons. So they package this with Botanomyces and it's dry and effervescent with a beautiful delicate grape character backed up with golden raisins, pear, and tropical fruit nuances. I don't know when I got this, but it's something I've been holding on for a while. I don't even, I don't even really see this set around that often. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not that familiar with Good Beer Company beer. But it uh, seems like a cool one. I like the bottle. The labeling's pretty cool. So I might let it sit for, I don't know, a little bit longer and see where it takes me. We'll see. Make a little little stack here. These birds, by the way, I don't, I don't know if you can hear them. I'm going crazy. Next, we're going to go into uh, one of my favorite American sour beer makers, Beechwood Blendery. They started out as just a regular uh, ale and beer making uh, brewery. They have a couple locations down on Long Beach, Seal Beach area. And uh, I'm gonna pull up what it says on the, my phone about what this, what they are. They are a small batch of beer producer established in 2014 by the creative minds of the award-winning Beachwood Brewery. Uh, the blender is embarked on a geeky quest to recreate Lambic style beers of Belgium. So they're one of the few ones that I know are really trying to recreate that style or get as close to it as possible, which is pretty awesome. That's not very common out here. They use the unmalted wheat, aged hops, they use coal ships. Uh, for spontaneous fermentation, oak barrels, and punchins. It's funny, they even says here on their website, they use custom designed barrel room to mimic the daily temperature humidity fluctuations of a Lambic brewery in Belgium. The guy who started this, Ryan Fields, or their head brewer and blender, comes from the Lost Abbey in San Diego. So pretty cool. Um, their stuff is pretty solid. I have had a lot of their stuff. And it's like within a block of where their actual uh, brewery is. And that brewery probably makes some of the best beers I've ever had, in general. Aside from just their sour stuff. So this is 2016. This one's called Into the Great Unknown. And ale fermented and aged in oak barrels and dry hop and mosaic. So I've had this for two years now. I'm sure the dry hops probably faded a little bit. But uh, you know, obviously the favorite is still gonna be there. So they start off with blending nine to 14 month old barrels. And they dry hop with mosaic. Um, and currently on their website, it says they have a version of this with Laurel and uh, Equinot hops, dry hopping. And they bottle condition with yeast for at least three months. Tropical fruit aromas, nice funk, soft acidity. These, de these beers can definitely really mimic that Lambic style. Uh, this one in particular, I don't remember if I've had the Mosaic one, but they're all great, earthy, funky, just smells like a countryside. It's great. Next one I got here is 2016 also. This is Chaos is a friend of mine. Um, ale fermented in aged oak barrels. And it's the result of blending barrels of their base beer to produce flavor and profile of Belgium Lambic. They, they begin the traditional grain bill, composed of Pilsner malt and raw wheat, which is then boiled for an extended amount of time with aged hops. Wow, so they're like doing like turbid mash stuff. Uh, the water is then fermented in aged and neutral French, French oak barrels, 19 to 14 months also, and blend it to bring it back to where, want, where they want it to be. Barnyard, stone fruit, soft acidity, um, all that stuff. So I have seen on the Instagram too, they'll like get like all their cups out and like lay them out all over their counter and they'll, like be, they'll have like a blending day or a blending tasting day, I, I should say. So this is really good. I have had this. And then the third one I have from them is called Fortune Favors the Funk. Ale fermented aged in oak barrels dry hops with experimental 598s. 
this does not have a date on it, but I think this is also 2016, maybe 2017. Really cool labeling. So I couldn't find too much uh, info on this. A beer inspired by the Belgian Lambic tradition blended with our friends at Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Oh, that's cool. So it's a collab, it looks like. Uh, so let's move on. Next is a beer from The Guard Brewing from Tillamook, Oregon. It says, located off the Oregon coast, they are dedicated to unique offerings and draws on historic traditions and local experimentation. The choice is yours. Hold or share. So I am uh, holding this. Tart Farmhouse Ale, Agent Oak with Light Harvest Riesling Grapes. This I have seen around on tap actually a few times out here in uh, California. De definitely probably less acidic than I usually like in a, in a sour beer from what I recall, but it has been a while. And I'm going to age this one for a while and just, you know, see if anything develops. Maybe open it another year or two and just see if it changed from when I had it when it was a little more fresh. So, love the brewery. I had one other beer from them as well. I can't recall at the moment, but they do make good stuff. So, we're going on to one of my favorite sour breweries and the sour brewery that got me into sour beer. Well, they're not only a sour brewery, but the first time I tasted sour beers was from them. That is Ladyface Ale Company. I went to the brewery in one of my uh, brew day videos I do with Sarah sometimes, and uh, we tasted through their beers. But they've been open since 2011, I want to say, maybe earlier, 2010. But uh, this is called Derailer. It's a beer to guard. This is in the past, been really funky, really funky, really wonderful. Um, it's part of their series of barrel aged inventions. Derailer, beer to guard for beer for keeping. Is a deep golden ale brewed to celebrate the golden passion of cycling, named after the bicycle's gear changing mechanism, invented by a French cycling enthusiast in 1905. This ale is malty and rustic with a spicy yeast character. Subtle flavors of French oak were derived from aging in Rhone varietal Mouvedre barrels, and uh, over one year. So yeah, this is really good. This one's from 2016. I'm excited to pop crack into this puppy at some point in the near future because I really do uh, like their stuff. And aging this is, has gone well in the past. Next one is a very popular brewery. I'm actually going to start stacking these because I'm getting a little old here. Next one is from a very popular brewery. You guys probably know them. A lot of you out there. Jolly Pumpkin. This is La Roja. This does not have a Yonex. I think they just release these pretty regularly. Uh, but it is, um, it says on the website, it's 25 IBUs, about 7.2% alcohol. Yeah, 7.2% alcohol. Uh, time in oak, two months to 15 months. Um, and Strissel Spalt and Tetanang are the hops. The grains are Pilsner malt, Pale Malt, Munich 10, Wheat Malt, Crystal 150, and Black Malt. So it's definitely on that ambery, reddish side. Um, and then they age in oak barrels. La Roja is a, is a Franco-Belgian style sour ale crafted in the Flanders tradition of aged and blended beers. I only had a few Jolly Pumpkins before, and I've not had La Roja. I just nabbed it recently. I think you can find these even at BevMo. They're not like super hard to track down. At least the ones out here. But these guys are located in, where was it again? Dexter, Michigan, which is just outside Detroit. So um, yeah, I think you can get these all over, and they're a pretty big brewery. I have another Jolly Pumpkin. This one is Oro de Calabaza. Um, and this one is IBU's 30, age two months to 14 months. Pilsner malt, pale malt, and wheat malt. And on the bottle it says aged in oak cast and, and re-fermented in the bottle. Brewed with the Franco-Belgian tradition of, I don't know what Franco-Belgian is to be honest. Never heard of that before. In a Franco-Belgian tradition of special golden ale, spicy and peppery with gentle hot bouquet and a beguiling influence of wild yeast. So uh, I have not had this particular one either, uh, but it's definitely one I really want to try. Both of those I really want to try. Do these? Oh, there's a date on this. This one says 2017, March 2017. This one, does it have one? It's rubbed off. It looks like 2017 also, even though it's rubbed off. It's the very, very bottom there. The cool thing about all of these, before I move on, is you can use the bottle drags from any one of these to create, recreate your own sour beers. I've done it before. You know, you just drink to about the last inch, swirl it up, throw it in your, your carboy or your fermenting vessel, and it'll go to work. Now you could probably even do with one bottle jug, you might be able to create a sour beer with it. I haven't tested that theory yet, especially for a five gallon batch, but it's feasible. If you haven't done it before, give it a shot. So three more beers left. Um, these are pretty like standard, like what people would 
people like, they're desired, they're definitely more, uh, what do I say, how do I say it, like, popular. Um, this one is less popular, but definitely, um, at least in California, I've heard it's like sought after. I don't even remember buying this. It's possible Sarah just brought one home from a sample because she works in the industry. And I have it. This is Leche Baracho Imperial Stout from Bottle Logic. And Bottle Logic is in Anaheim, which is where Disneyland is, for those who don't know. And this year, 2016. So, you know, a couple years old now. Um, the info on this is that it's a Imperial Stout brew with ancho peppers, cinnamon, cocoa nibs, lactose sugar, aged in tequila and bourbon barrels. So again, I think these go fairly pricey. I think I ran across when I was researching a little bit on some of this stuff where these were going for like 60, 70 bucks, I think. But I don't know if that's true. But I've never had one. I think this year might be the, the year I try it. Maybe closer to like the holidays. And next is a very popular one. Um, I don't think it's too hard to get, but, uh, but I don't know. I, didn't, I don't remember buying this one either. I think Sarah also got this for me. She did, because it says Evanston Rice on it. Yeah, she, yeah, so is this one. Okay, I missed that the first time. So these are from her work. Um, when she gets these in, she'll be like, hey, I bought you a bottle or just set one aside. Um, yeah, so this is the Goose Island Bourbon County Barley Wine. This is 2016, I want to say. Yeah, 2016. This is, you know, definitely like, I think in a lot of people's collections, at least one of these are. They actually didn't make 2017 because, uh, what was it? Uh, they said it wasn't how they wanted it. Um, this one says for 2016, uh, it was aged in second yeast barrels that were once home to Kentucky bourbon. Uh, this is a traditional English style. The intricacies of the previous barrel of denizens. Oak, charcoal, hints of tobacco and vanilla. So it's hearty, complex, flavorful, and yeah, I've never actually had it, but uh, maybe in the next year or two I'll crack it open. One more to go. I didn't say necessarily best for last, but it's my oldest for last. So this one is, you don't, don't make it anymore. It was a one of a kind, and the company actually shut down for a half a second. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm really gonna store this one, but it's probably about due to drink. This is a Speakeasy Syndicate Batch 1. It's the only one I actually have cold, because I was worried just leaving it out that it would just keep getting maltier and oxidized, I should say, because this was made in 2013. So it's a very old beer, and so I just keep it cold these days. And I almost opened it a couple holidays ago, but I just I didn't. I don't know why. Uh, but it's definitely due to be open. This would be really good on like a nice chilly night. Um, really, really embrace it. Now on the bottle it says a rare blend of barrel aged ales. But I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let you know what those are. So this is blended with the Godfather barley wine, and that barley wine is aged 26 months, and then black can chocolate milk stout volume one. And that one's a that's some pretty old style age 13 months, two minutes to midnight, and that was that was age 12 months. Then Trail of Imperial Red, and that was that was age 12 months. Their Double Daddy Imperial IPA, and that was age 12 months. And then lastly, that they have their Payback Porter, and that was age 18 months. So it's a crazy blend of all these beers that are aged. I don't know how you even decide how to blend with all those nuances. They must have just sat there for hours and hours and hours and just tried every little combination until they got how they wanted it. This is, uh, I'm gonna keep holding on to this one for sure, because this seems like a really cool one. But again, it's probably about need to be drunk at this point, that being a five-year-old beer. So uh, that's it for this part for the very first um, video of two I'm doing on my cellar collection. And if I wanna know what you guys have in your cellar. I'm, I like collecting these kind of things and holding on to them. If you guys have anything cool that you recommend, let me know. I'm also curious to see what you guys have out there. Uh, it's very exciting. You know, anyone out there who has this kind of stuff, it's, it's very fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what you guys have. See you next time.